So, have you ever uh, compared results, uh, especially on the X1 Carbon here, uh, compared the results of the uh, flow calibration, compare a manual to an automatic, uh, the results, and, and compare them, see how, how close they are or how far apart the results are, and uh, then I'd take those results and compare them to what I'm using or what I'm getting on the P1P, which is always a manual calibration, but I was using the exact same filaments um, and uh, exact same settings. I mean, I even changed the nozzle on the P1P. Well, it's a P1S now. Uh, converted it to a P1S and then changed the, the nozzle over to a uh, hardened steel nozzle. So I decided to do that because I was getting some strange prints, right? They just weren't consistent with what I was getting in the past. And this has happened before. Um, I know, you know, I don't know if it's just coincidence or not, but every time they, there has been a, a couple of times when they'd put out a new uh, firmware release and, you know, I'd load it up and then I'd go back uh, with some production parts and, and with these, yeah, I saved the project. So when I pull it up, it's the exact same settings and boom not working. I have to go back and tw start tweaking everything and I sometimes I wasted a day, sometimes there was one firmware release where it took me a week to get it back to where it was going. These are production parts now. Uh, and I love the way these things are printing. They're, they're printing fast. They, they usually print pretty good, but I get inconsistent results uh, between batches, I guess you could say, between firmware uh, changes between yeah so this time I was, I was, I was thinking okay I'm, I'm getting some changes here uh, and this time I took both printers and I, I did my maintenance on them I cleaned them all up uh, you know clean the rods you know greased everything and, and you know check the belts I mean I, I did the works right and on the X1 carbon cleaned off the LiDAR and I mean, they're, they're good to go, right? So the first thing I did, especially with the, uh, the X1 Carbon, I, I compared the manual to, uh, to the automatic uh, calibration and compared them to the past results that I did. But, uh, well, let's take a look. And before we get started, remember to check out our website. We have a growing number of products, services, and even some pretty cool t-shirts. So, well, let's get started. Well, okay, so you can see I do a lot of ASA here and uh, you can see some of the K values that I had used uh, on the auto calibration. This is on an X1 carbon and, and I was getting consistently 0 0.026, 0 0.024 uh, and it would, uh, yeah, you can see I was using Overture and, uh, and I obviously also use Polylite. But on this one, you can see the 0.015, there's a big difference. Uh, this one, I did a manual calibration uh, when it was at 0.026 using the, uh, the auto calibration. And I did a manual and by visually looking at it, I was like, man, I think the .015 looked a little better. And I did the same thing on my P1P, and and I was getting manual, you know, readings on it, looking at zero to .005 looked better. And this was on this same ASA, the Polylite ASA Black. Uh, so I decided I'm going to run some PLA on on a certain print and I remember I got this .035 with the uh, doing the auto calibration so out of curiosity I'm going to do it on a manual calibration let's see cool plate there we go yeah, it's right on it um, and for the range let's go well let's keep it all .005 um, Let's just leave it like that so we can have a good, uh, we can take a good look at it. Mm. 
Yeah, so here's the results. Let's take a look. See if I can do this. That's hard to read, isn't it? But uh, well, it went from 0 to 0.05. Is that in 5 inches? So there's 0, then 0 0.0005, then 0 0.010. Okay, so it goes in that increments, and it looks like it got up to 020. If I'm looking at this one, I think that one is the best one. This one goes up to 025. This goes to 030. Yeah, see, it's starting to bulge back here. So I think this one looks better at 0 0.020, but to really, I guess to really define it, I can go back and, and, and change the range, right, where I can go, um, where I go from 0 0.015 and up to 0 0.03 but do it in, in 0 0.001 increments that'll be interesting let's see what that does okay so let's go back let's do a manual calibration uh, everything's the same we're going to change from 0 0.015 We'll go up to zero three point zero zero one increments. So this will be a little more detailed, right? Within that range. All right. We'll see how that turns out. So here's the next batch. I don't know why the numbers are not uh, not printing that well, not sticking. But we'll figure that out. But let's take a look. Because what I'm thinking is um, the settings that I have this on right now are the point zero three five that I was talking about. But let's see. I'm going to put my reading glasses on to see this. And I'm going to take a really, really close look. Okay, it's still skinny down here. Yeah, so I'm still looking at uh, what is it? Point zero two zero. The next one up's point zero two one, but it gets skinny over here. Two two. Yeah, so if we're way up here, we're showing point oh two nine. Yeah, see how it's blotched here and real skinny right here. But I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to input. Point zero two zero. Yeah, I think that's what uh, looks better on for this one. So let's go back. Point zero two zero, and what was this? Um, Ceramic PLA plus gray. All right, so that should overwrite what I just put in here, but you can see. There's the previous one, 
but it was at uh, 0 0.035, right? Alright, now out of curiosity, I might go run an automatic again and see what it tells me, right? So the auto calibration, here's the settings, cool plate, generic, and there we go. We'll see how this one goes. Alright, it's one in the winding it back looks like it has done its duty so let's see what it uh, let's see what it tells us so here we go let's see what happens look at that 0 0.032 I don't know if I want to set it at 0 0.032 again um, I'm just going to label it test again. But instead of test, I'm going to go back to Duramic 0.020. That's what I feel more comfortable printing at because, well, you saw the difference between 0 0.20 and up to 0 0.029. Um, dang, you can see there was a huge difference, right? And this one was telling me at uh, 0.03, what was it? Uh, yeah, 0 0.032, that's a huge difference. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I go through and from from looking at it visually, I, I I trust the manual calibration a lot more than I do the automatic because um, I can visually see it and I'm making the the, the choice right on on the samples uh, to get the K value. Um, now I don't know with with the X1 Carbon is it, and I can't say that uh, it was a dirty LiDAR lens or anything like that because I, I mean, I just cleaned them off and it's operating like it should, or so I, I think it should. And, but is the automatic calibration, is it really, is it really that good? You know, <laughs> can I trust it? I don't know. Is, is the LiDAR actually working the way it should? Uh, if you ask me, I, I don't think it is because the, on the manual settings, you can see there's there's a pretty big difference between what I'm choosing and what uh, and what the X1 Carbon is choosing through the lidar. And in the past, also, uh, I've had uh, where it went through and it didn't it didn't uh, detect a spaghetti you know building up and it's just a matter of me I, I happened to be walking by and went oh shit so I went and stopped it myself it gave no warning um, and other times what was another time was it uh, on the first layer um, inspection but I've always had a, a good first layer right so I can't really say that but all those anomalies that were happening and, and I was thinking, well, it's probably just a dirty lens. It's, I probably need to clean it, right? Because sometimes I, I use ASA a lot, and um, and I don't know how how they have the settings on this um, when it tells you that okay, it's it's time to clean the rods and, and clear the light art. Is it is it based on a on a the hours of printing and it gives you the the warning or the suggestion to do all that? Or is it really sensing that uh, the LiDAR is having a hard time reading something and then it triggers that off? I don't know. I don't know how that's set up. I'll have to read about that. But in the past, I was always just thinking, well, it's probably, I just need to clean it. I just need to, it's probably something I did. But now after seeing this, it's like, I'm not so sure, you know. Uh, but for now, I mean, I'm going to trust my manual settings. I, 
you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it lay down the samples, and I want to make the decision, right? <laughs> I, I'm gonna look at it and say, I think that's a good print. You know, I think it's printing better. Uh, but those are my results. Um, would it be interesting? Try it yourself. You know, especially if you have an X1 carbon, and compare the results, um, and let me know what you think. All right. So, well, I guess that's it for this video. I, I don't want to keep rambling about it, but uh, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.